Um, what's good, crew? Dagger talk in the building. Is your boy Brandon? Rena, it's a new hairstyle, <laughs> you know, for the 2024 season. Mark, as you already know him, King Toxic. King and Toxic. Our special guest, Zoe, the traveliest of travelers. <laughs> and um, we want to just take this part of the podcast to discuss, like, um, what kind of experiences you have. Like, for me in particular, I'm very curious because uh, I've never actually been to any other Caribbean countries outside of Trinidad and Tobago. So, um, what is that like for you? What's your okay? So, if you could go, I'm not saying you had to go by country by country, mm -hmm. but if you could tell me some common experiences you would have had through different Caribbean countries that you find similar, that would be nice. We need to find out how many countries you've been to. <coughs> islands, let's do islands first. I actually don't know. We'll have really? to count. Oh, lord, okay, okay, cool. So, <laughs> do you count Tobago as another one? No, Trinidad and Tobago is one. I so, might. Grenada, <laughs> mm -hmm. Jamaica, uh -huh. St. Lucia, okay, Barbados, Ooh. St. Vincent. St. Kitts, um, Guadeloupe, um, do you count Dominican Republic and Haiti? Yeah, that's I would. Different, yeah. So Dominican Republic, uh -huh. Haiti. Um, the whole Caribbean? <laughs> um, <laughs> At this point. It's 51 Have I said St. Lucia? I can't remember. It's 51 Probably. countries. No, but how much islands does it have? You know, that's a question I, I can't answer. So. I... Is that good thing me not? Is that good thing me not on what you know? Oh good. Okay. 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 Why, yeah, I, I really want to collab with him actually. I think he's very why, funny. Why y'all don't just ask how much country she been to? How much country? Well, I've been to she... forty nine countries in my life. God damn. And some of that I was a child. Do you know what I mean? And so I guess not all of those would have been Caribbean countries. Mm -hmm. And have forty nine Caribbean countries. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. Well, I guess what so far you did said you said ten. Let's just islands. call it ten then, because I. Let's yeah, you can remember. Mm -hmm. Like, because I know I can't remember which ones I said, so let's just call it 10. Up of the top okay, of the That's dome. more than most of us. I went my to three. <laughs> yeah, and I even been to, to, to 10 um, countries in general. Same. Holistically. But, um... So the like, question again, was, like, similarities yeah. between them. Mm -hmm. So, like, they kind of yeah. look the same with, like, the buildings and stuff, except yeah. I find here is a bit more developed. <laughs> but generally... <laughs> Big up that. Big up the tea There was the oil money back in the day. I don't know if it's a good or like a bad thing though, but yeah. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, the buildings kind of look the same. There's like rum shops everywhere, um, except Guadeloupe was different because you know it's like part of France, mm. so you can see that it's like part of France. But um, everywhere else, yeah, there's like a lot of rum shops. There's a lot of just like takeaways, street food, just food everywhere. Mm. Obviously, there's a lot of beaches. Um, quite the best it's beach. quite colorful like Probably you know the how like, the caribbean like people's houses are quite colorful whereas like in england they're just made of bricks. dull yeah, yeah. <laughs> so which which beach had the most which like... country had he, which island had the best beach oh god say it i nah. hate like when people ask the best man you could you could burn out trinidad and i don't care because i know it's not trinidad it's not trinidad i know it's not trinidad i know it's not trinidad beaches never been to Grenada. has good beaches jamaica has good beaches Tobago actually in that conversation. I, I know, right? I told you this. No, don't get me wrong. Tobago I know Tobago have nice like beaches, but I, I didn't even consider it part of the conversation. Tobago? Mm. Really? A lot of people like Tobago actually. Trinidad I mean, I like Tobago. I like Tobago. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Like Tobago. Like well, Tobago don't like we, but we like yeah. Tobago. Yeah. Because we scum a window to be here. You ever been to Pirates Bay? No. Yeah, Pirates Bay is really cool. Pirates Bay is nice. Imagine. Beach. I, <laughs> I'm a national. Never right. been. Yeah, I know your country. Yeah, but it's explore. like people come to England. And they say to me, like, "Have you been to Harry Potter World?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, have you been I to? I guess Hogwarts? like sometimes when you're in your in your own country, you're yeah, busy, like, like working or seeing your family, or you're not like motivated to explore. But if you've paid your money for a flight to a different country, then you're motivated hmm. to explore. You're gonna see you know everything. I mean? so, yeah, <laughs> like you can't yeah. waste your time. Whereas like here, you feel like you have your whole life, so you can waste your time, right? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, no. Even I thought I haven't explored England as much as maybe some people that have been there. So that's a fair assessment of the situation. But I also have a really damn question. Well, actually, one normal question first. You ever been to Guyana before? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so now there's the there's here's the dumb question: Is it curry chicken or chicken curry mm -hmm. to you? Whichever country I'm in, I'll just no, 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 no. There's an objective a answer. There's an objective answer. answer. No, but I'm telling answer. the truth. When I was in Guyana and I made vlogs, I'd be like, oh. Yeah, I'm currently eating some vegetable curry, but then when I come here, I say like I'm eating some. You say curry vegetables. I've never yeah. heard the two nah. curry vegetables. What yeah, is in that? Yeah, Jamaica curry veg. Yeah, it's a thing. What? It's so pumpkin, if Jamaica, and if... Wait, 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 wait. No, but so... when it's all together in like one curry. I see. Like that... an ital shop. This is this is my okay. problem. This is my problem, right? So if other Caribbean countries could agree that. Be curry and the thing, not the thing becoming the curry. Why is it Guyana? I can't fit into the mood. Let's not, let, let no, me not India, bash Guyana. In, 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 I'm here up, bashing Guyana. But in India, it's like chickpea curry. 
and the whole curry oh, no. comes from India, right? Oh no. Well, no. If you think about like this, is, you say <clears throat> fried chicken, not chicken fried, or baked chicken. So if it's curried, you will say curried chicken. So that's how it's supposed to be. We just as a country just saying curry chicken. I'm yeah, not but saying it properly. Okay, either. so why is, we were supposed to say curried it's chicken. It's supposed to be curried chicken. Yeah, but we, but then, then that's we speak broken English. Correct. But curry is a noun. Like for me, curry is a verb and a noun. So when it's a noun. But that's, like, that's what it objectively is. This is a, a, a blue phone, right? Mm. So then it would have to be a chicken curry if it's a noun. But if it's a verb like curried chicken, then it would have to be curried right, chicken. This became, this so became language out despite travel very quickly. And this is my fault. I'll go ahead and take responsible. I'm take responsible for that my deepest apologies okay well he <coughs> asked about beaches food talk to us about food so i'm vegan Island. so it's different oh, um, no. so for vegan food i would say <laughs> jamaica yeah. because obviously to come to food, that's the home of ital food and then here and guyana because there's like hey the and guyana because it's like the indian influence so there's like oh. so many vegetables you know and how the does, obviously how does that okay like in terms of experimentation with food how does that work for you it's, well being well traveled right like everybody, like every country, so accommodating in terms of you know no. vegan cuisine. No, a lot of countries they're like, "What is this vegan?" I don't even bother to say vegan because they won't know what it is, or they'll <laughs> be like, "Oh, what you're allergic or something." Like they don't really understand. Hmm. But I'll just ask for like every country has rice, every country has bread, every country has peanuts, every country has beans. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I'll just make up something from... People make it so difficult vegan. You could... Doubles is literally vegan. Doubles is literally vegan. Yeah. Doesn't people doubles pretend like people it? don't eat any uh, vegan food. I don't know general. actually. I can't doubles remember. Doubles is vegan. I have a vegan doubles cousin from it? England. I just, and... just want to say she ate three doubles for breakfast and three doubles for dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that's, those, that's not a normal practice for regular. Oh. We don't eat doubles for dinner. That, yeah. Well, yes, that's how. That, yeah. Let me not get into that. Let me not. But that's just the Trinidad diet, obviously. That's yeah. only in Trinidad. Yeah, when mm. you have your pumpkin, any baji rice, you could have like good vegan food. It doesn't yeah, have to definitely. be just plain pasta and just rice. Like they have yeah. like good coconut milk. Well, pasta not vegan, so you could just. No, like, well, it's a vegan pasta, but you know. Pasta, pasta not vegan? No, no pasta having in it. But when pasta is having in it? Cheese. No, like, like normal if you're pasta, cooking, I mean, I'm talking about like cheese. pasta took yeah, no pasta, a packet oh, of pasta okay. is vegan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, the doubles is just the easiest thing to find because it's always there at any time. Do you know what and I mean? you could just, I guess, you could go for a potato roti, fries, but you could get yeah, a so proper roti, roti. Chana, pumpkin, bodhi, bhaji. everything in it yeah. is <sighs> vegan basically without chicken. Yeah. I just want to say, shrimp. even with the doubles, she don't like sweet sauce, though. What, what? yeah. <laughs> You're just an old girl. But anyway, everybody have their preference. Did you skip the bandana sauce? No, I get extra shallow any sauce. Oh, my. Bandana sauce? <laughs> we'll go ahead. Oh, gosh, just let it slide now. Let it slide now. That's a real right, country Cody. talk there. Somebody, I eat I'm a country somewhere boy. And I was like, <clears throat> one bandana. And I was like, what are you talking about? What's up? What do you mean you don't know, you don't know what's bandana sauce for it? The green sauce. Shadow, shadow Benny? Yes, yeah. Thing. Just say shadow Benny. But people don't say bandana. Bandana. Yes, son. Oh, you, my gosh. You really have to take your for real, yes? Oh. You really have to take it for real. Let me, let me come off as Zoe for a bit and talk about the new hairstyle. What? Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. we this isn't about me today. We, we, we twinning. We're twinning. She's Jericho Earl Jericho part two. Jericho Earl and, and plus, eh? Yes, I joined the Jericho Earl. Well, this is... Gang, this gang. Is, I always used to have short hair. Yeah. People just know me in the last four or five years and I had your ass for so long. Well, for <clears> four or <throat> five years that basically came in during COVID. So literally, <laughs> I just had a ass because my brush broke. Right? So, <laughs> Pennywise was closed. Pennywise was closed. And I, like, this is when we didn't oh, know anything Russian about bro. the pandemic. So we, I was like petrified to like leave the house. So like I just had my hair. You were twist. petrified? Yes. You don't, you don't give petrified. Oh gosh. Vibes. Like I have elderly parents. So I didn't want to go out there for a brush and then kill them. Mm. So, wait, that's mad extreme. I don't like them. But wait. Yeah. So like I just left my hair and I had a ras and I loved it. Nothing was wrong with my ras. But... That thing was heavy. I nearly drunk Sunday at time in the beach because I like this long, heavy thing. And my ras thick. So I was Man, like, bro. Shorty ras no, was thick for let real. Me tell you the, let me tell you the honest truth, right? So that's what happened, right? I had COVID earlier this month. And oh, he's know, one of them too who gets COVID. Mm. Idle hands, idle hands. I started to come <laughs> out. I was supposed to come out my locks a while now. Start coming out my locks. Oh, this come out real easy. People taking weeks to come out their locks. I come out eight during a movie. And my hair was like long, long, long. And I was like, okay. And my mom come like a jumpy in the room. I will help. I will help. And she come in a comb. And she start combing it out. And I was like, mom, you're using your own comb. And the comb break. 
She was like, I can't take this. And she just cut off some of the locks. So I literally had long hair yeah. and a big, like, four missing up to hair. Nah. So I, madness. So I literally was like, why would you do that? She was like, this would have taken forever. I was like, mom, I did eight in one day. I only had, like, 50-something locks. Mom, sabotage I would have locks, yes. In two twos. I was real upset because, like, I wanted to still be able to put it in a bun. But, yeah. but I already had short hair. Your mom, sabotage your locks, though. Yeah, she come like a jumbie. No, mom, That's what, actual what bonnelly you ham. You can send him with it to jail. Just cut it off and keep it. Because, you know, you could... You well, could, you I could. remember I come out eight. I chop off some hair and then yeah, but you can lock it back in. You know that, right? What time is that? Uh, that's enough garbage somewhere, you know. <laughs> nah, you could have sell that Yeah, people then. sell me about that. You know, but why to put on somebody head and do obia? You mad? <laughs> Crazy. I'll be the first I, I'll one in line. I'm probably still home. I could be wrong. I'll Maybe be the first one. I could put it back in. That mm-hmm. we're trying to say. I'll be the first one in line to do obia on you. Take I that worm out your belly. I, oh my god. Take that worm out your belly. As you're speaking of Ras, Zoe, where's your thing with Rasta, man? What? Bro, yeah. I'm vegan. Rasta's what? are vegan. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, all the passion dreads, but actual Rasta's are vegan. Rasta's right? fear in his own. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I really thought that was going to go a different direction. <laughs> no, it's in that direction. I was, I was like, like yeah. on the, the only meat cheese <laughs> consumer is Rastafarian meat. <laughs> 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 no, that's a fashion dread. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was like, like, like Rasta is a serious thing. Like in Dominica, they had a rule like very recently that the police could shoot Rastas with no repercussions. And you want to go around throwing around this word that anybody with locks is a Rasta. Like in Dominica, there are Rastas who are older, maybe let's say 70 years old, who were young when this rule was in place. And they're limping because they got shot because of this law. Because like in, in Jamaica, you can look into like the Moran Bay Rebellion. Like it's a serious thing that like people have been persecuted for. Like throughout history so it's not just in my opinion it's not just the word to like throw around and call anyone that when people have lost their lives like for that belief do you know what i mean like no, very passionate and, yeah. and versed in the situation like, yeah because yeah. i, I didn't even know that yeah so yeah, a lot of people who have yeah we need but then, the, but then yeah. the fashion dread like it's like i can wear a cross a, a necklace with a cross it doesn't mean i'm, I'm a christian Indeed. Yeah. it means i'm wearing a cross for fashion i can mm-hmm. tattoo a cross for fashion but that doesn't mean i'm a christian Agreed. do you know what i mean like yeah. somebody can have locks or I will call them a fashion dread, but like <coughs> you can have locks and not be a raster. Yeah, exactly. like that's majority of us in the Caribbean yeah. because yeah. you're yeah. just on an island and it just re- literally just happened for some of us. Yeah. And it's not re- necessarily a lifestyle. Like imagine once I was walking on the street with this boy that, that had locks, but like he ate pork, like smoked cigarettes, you know what I mean? Like there was nothing raster about him whatsoever. And then on the street, someone wanted to address him. So they shouted, Farai. And he answered. And I was like, no way this person's answering to Faro when they're going to go and eat pork. And some yeah, pork. he wants to be calling me Ras. Ras. <laughs> like, right, true. I, I don't know, know. Like, mm-hmm. I was just. Yes, I used to say I had locks. locks. Fashion, yes. right, fashion dread, I call it. I call it fashion dread. Now I had locks. I used to call it locks. Yeah, but you'd yeah. never be like, I'm a raster. Nah. Right? Do you know what I mean? Because I was not. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So I like, eat a chicken. Exactly. <laughs> when people talk to me about you, they say, the raster on you. Who's beyond all the raster? You see, that's the thing. <laughs> I'm not my hair. So I don't, if people... I'm the same way. You can be a Rasta and not have There's a song about that. Yes. So you don't have to dread to be Rasta. To be Rasta. Exactly. I'm right. in your heart. So like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't know. But you ever see any bald person claiming to be Rasta? You ever see that? Like, but like, to be honest, people Never see a bald Rasta before? Well, you don't know, do you? Because the bald man walking past you on the street tomorrow could be a Rasta and you wouldn't know. It's so true. you just ask like, him, Like, when are you going to get into that conversation? <laughs> like, um you know you can follow like a certain way of life and you don't have to go around giving it a name like a bald person could be living way more rasta than somebody yeah with logs doesn't mean he claimed rasta for an ism Rast- it's True. not an ism well all the, all the went oh. real far i was just asking in terms of birds why all the birds must be rasta <laughs> <laughs> so do you know my ex-boyfriend that has me in chokehold still to this day is not a rasta so what's his ethnicity yeah. then what well, about the one from tobago that was we literally did a cooking video together. Oh, what's That's his, it. What's his what's his ethnicity <laughs> then? Can't talk to my mother or somebody okay, feeling so as your man and all my TikTok, goodness. Especially not on TikTok. Uh, especially TikTok, not on TikTok. She have three birds. She have Ras number. She have bird mm. number one, which is a Rasta. She have bird number two, which just happened to be me, and bird number three, which is our next Rasta. Yeah, I like that. Rasta then. Nah, it's not Rasta. No, play a play a bird. Yeah. The other oh. two we were just thrown in the mix. Exactly like, for the banter. <laughs> I I like that for you. Yeah, <laughs> I like that for you at all. You have your birds. I don't, just actually, said she I don't have, have any birds. Hey, hey, you know, girls is talking code. No, she just no, saying, sometimes she's saying she don't have birds, but 
No, she really don't have birds. No, actually right don't. Now. She really don't have birds right now. So, but I'll take you with food. I no, just, but on a serious note, the reason why on my TikTok I would obviously do cooking videos with Rastas is because I'm vegan and they're vegan. And also, <clears> I just <throat> find that... So obviously, I eat at ITEL shops in the Caribbean because that's where I can eat. And they kind of ended up becoming like a safe space for me because I know that any city I'm in in the Caribbean, I can just find the ITEL shop. And I know mm. that even if it's in like a loud city or like a dangerous city or a city where men are like trying to grab my thighs on the street, I can go in the ITEL shop and I'll be respected and I'll be fed. And I'll be able to have like political conversation, interesting conversation. They never like say to me, oh, you shouldn't. Everyone else I meet, or not everyone, but a lot of other people I meet, like regular people, they're like, oh, you shouldn't travel like that. Aren't you scared? A woman like you shouldn't travel like that by yourself. But anytime when I'm hanging around Rastas and I tell them what I'm doing, they're like, oh, like you've got a good spirit. Like, you know, you'll be protected. Like that they never so like true. question what I'm doing like that. They just, that is so you know what true. I mean? Like encourage me and it's like, they understand where I'm coming from. And so obviously where are you going to hang out? Like where you're respected and where you're encouraging what you're doing and where people don't... Do you know how tiring it is being vegan in a place where they're like, oh, but don't you just want some jerk chicken? Oh, but don't no. you just want... No. Yeah, I'm one of those. I mean, like, I'm one of those. So no, but I what prefer you're to seeing... be in places where I'm not questioned about what I'm doing and what I'm eating and do you know what I mean? About you Rastas and them. They have a different level of respect with Rastas and stuff. When I, as a female walking around, I'm mixed skilled too. Everybody, when you're getting cat call, reds, slims, all kind of thing. When I had my ras, it was embrace, <laughs> ras. You know, it, it was like a different, they used to approach yeah. me differently. Now I go and mark, uh, like, like, yeah, I don't care. I don't know, but now I go and mark some reds, no glow. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah, I the don't compliments miss this. downgrade. The compliments downgrade. downgrade. Mm. <laughs> the girls come back, but no, that's real. Yeah, exactly. So. I just think we should all go where we feel safe and respected and that's what I feel safe and respected. Well, that's so. my question. I was coming up as a female, right? Traveling alone because I do it sometimes, but you go into like, as they say, dangerous countries, islands and so forth. <coughs> like you've had any experiences and like, I will never go back to this country. <laughs> um, I think for me, like I've obviously had experiences because I took my first solo trip when I was 19 and I'm now 30. <laughs> so it's been like a really long period throughout which I haven't obviously been constantly traveling, but like that I've been traveling a lot for the last 11 years so obviously things have happened but like for me I just feel like anything can kind of happen anywhere and like despite something happening it wouldn't really make me not go back like what would make me not go back is just like if I found that there wasn't too much to do in that country but like for me for example like I got robbed at gunpoint in Barbados the first time I went there but I went back like five times Barbados. after I say I yeah. never go back to Barbados but the, for me is the, for me it makes no sense <laughs> because no but this this thing, I personally not going back to Barbados yes it's a beautiful yeah. island yeah i'm I've not going been, back so there at all i mean it was nice i enjoy i literally just went to yeah. being all inclusive <laughs> i had a carnival good yeah that's why i was going back then it was like sorry crop was, over. i just said sorry to my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was mostly going for crop over that's like yeah. why i went back but for me it's like i don't know why these people are yeah, talking well, about yeah, we, um <laughs> but yeah for me it's like um yeah obviously people get robbed at gunpoint every day every, in yeah. the world right so it happened to me in barbados it might happen to you in costa rica it might happen to you in france it might happen to you in spain jolly good it, you're like, just there's, unlucky. No, there's not a reason like, just unlucky, just unlucky. it wasn't like a negative experience for me to say i know go back to barbados it's just that like i just the people there maybe because this people don't islanders just don't like trinidadians like i didn't even have to say anything like it was just written across my head that's a trini and like they just move real yeah. different with me i really thought it's because they didn't call the empress and no no this is before i had locks is when i had well that's why i didn't get the empress so. and um i with my family from the uk as well and oh they're picking up everybody bags so i was like what well, i don't get help too because like you know they this oh you have it they, they want to like impress the foreigners mm -hmm. anybody else in the character on other islands they don't really care for i just find it was like a shitty experience <laughs> Yes, Bobby, this was beautiful, but I could I, I don't Can have to go. Can you compare it? Like, have you been to any other islands that you could compare <laughs> the experience to? Um, no, I don't really, because from from an island, I'm like, why well, I want to go to another island? So like, basically, see. no, Grenada is it to me? Really? Is it? Yeah. I'll take Maybe you with I'll try it. Um, I have the to beaches, make a trip this the food, year. the people, um, money also. Like, what you could get there for. The money you spend is plenty. Bang for your buck. And yeah. is the last time you've been they to Grenada? They have a club called Owl, though. They're real, they're real expensive. But other than that... So is the conversion there for like one US? I don't know. They just deal with a, a other currency. I can't remember it. But it's like to EC 2.5 to, to, to our money or something like that. No, not bad. But, but no, the, it, it real good. Like the food, everything, the beaches. 
The only thing like that street food, like how you know we have the cross, they have like a cross, but they don't they don't um serve food in like styrofoam or anything. You're getting it in foil. So you can order literally barbecue chicken and fries and they're putting it in foil and giving it in foil. Nice. Yes. Like them um like them Instagram or TikTok um street food thing from India where they just be oh serving anything. I, I, I will never no, you, no. you ever been to India? No, I really want to. Oh my dad went there and he used to travel my father is a real travel and he was like, That's one place I never go in back. He was just like it was depressing as hell, even though he stayed in nice areas, mm. they explore. And he say he said <clears> some <throat> crazy shit and he was just like, This ain't it. Yeah. Like, oh gosh, was he river there again? The Ga- Ganges. The Ganges, Ganges whatever. Yeah. All right, he say his, his, um, on his friends and thing, he say, I, you know, I have Indian roots. He going to take water from the Ganges or whatever. They had no, the hotel. You, you can't do that. Listen, and he's there saying, the any hotel and thing, there was like days past. He's like, what's smelling so, boy? Yeah, no, you can't you do that. You know that water. I mean, it's separate and settle. All kind of debris, nastiness and thing yeah. in there. Could. And I think dad was like taking some like videos and stuff of the scenery and like he just see a man like just stoop and shit and washy bottom right in yeah, the river. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And he was like, I, I, I can't do this. I think that nice. he did us. Anyway, let me, let me not go. Let me not talk about sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to speak on that too much. Much yeah, love to our Indian brethren. What, 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 what was the dirtiest country you went to? Oh, God. Yes. That's not a nice Pull question. Pull me up, pull me up, pull me no, up. I mean... You, okay, that, can I clarify your question? question? Do yeah. you mean the literal amounts of garbage on the floor? Is yeah, that what you mean? Yeah, pa- yeah. Okay, uh, France. <laughs> okay, personally, probably... It depends if you mean on the streets or on the beaches. Because I'm sorry, Trinidad is awful for the beaches when it comes yeah, to plastic bottles to. and stuff. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really yeah. awful. That's it's gotten better, though. It's gotten better, though. On the street itself, it'll be Haiti. <clears throat> yeah. Um, oh, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. And I found like Haiti really beautiful and I really <laughs> want to go back. But in terms of like the rubbish, I think there was just maybe some of like the drainage. Haiti. Haiti, what yeah. Was, what was your motivation the, to go there, Gil? To go just to Haiti. Just to visit? I think it's fascinating. It's like the world's first black republic. Um, oh. Like, I really, I'm interested in the language. Like I have a degree in languages. So, like I like okay, different okay, languages. Okay, so I, I taught myself like some Haitian Creole before I went and I actually spoke it. Uh, and it it's French awesome. Creole across there. Something. Well, oh, yeah, Haitian Creole, but it's based on yeah. French, yeah. Um, but I was in the Dominican Republic anyway, so I just had to cross the border. So yeah, I just Legally? You just run across? No, you just, they have like- Cause it's literally just like, yeah. like no, a big, it's a bridge. Big, and they have yeah. like passport offices. They have a gate oh, and it opens okay. at certain hours and you just stop the thing. You have to pay them like 30 US or something. It's like a visa-ish, not a visa, but like a, you have to pay them a fee. It's like a pass. It's just a pass to... It's like a, like a yeah, but that's booth. normal. To cross borders, you often have to pay like a 20 Naturally. US or 30 US. Well, you hear that, Trinidad, do better um, with all the beaches. Yes. Clean up. No, but we've been doing better though. Like, it's no, not like we... we still need to do much we better. We need you... to do much better. No, but I was talking like before COVID, we was really sick. Like we was, we was like, sick then. But after COVID, I realized it's... Like, but you, you know, it. sometimes it's been so awkward. Like, because obviously because I'm traveling, I often hang out with people that I don't know very well, right? Mm-hmm. Because I've only been in this country a week. I meet someone, they say, do you want to go to the beach? Okay, cool. So like sometimes I'll go with them and naturally you'll bring like some drinks and stuff, right? And then there's been like more than one occasion where, you know, at the end I'll be like, oh, okay, so should we, you know, where's the rubbish bag? Like, should we, you know, because we're packing up to go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like mm-hmm. saying, should we like, how are we going to carry this rubbish to the car type thing? And then there's been times when like people have literally laughed at me and being like, you don't see the beach. And like, as if because, because there's more rubbish, they just don't leave it. Yeah. Nah, I can see that. No, nah, nah, no, nah, nah, I can see that. I can see that happening. Oh, I can't remember. It was last oh. time. Nah, it can't be more. Because like, it's not the same. Like, it's not the same. And it's not from what I've seen. Or like when... You know, I just like, want to remind, I just want to tell all you that Zoe's favorite beach in Trinidad is Flower Pot. Big up the Flower yes, Pot. Big up Flower Pot. Big up Pot. Yes. Big up the Flower Pot. Bye bye Pleasant Park. Big up the Pleasant Park. Big up the Pleasant Park. I haven't been to Flower Pot since I was like six. Yeah. Since I was like, what, 11? Nah, we just go there. We wanted to go there today. No, but it's, I think Sunday is yeah. best on a Sunday. Sunday has the vibes. Sunday is pan semi. We gotta go early in the morning. All right. Yeah, but no one's gonna be at flower pot early in the morning. Yeah. Oh, Sunday? so you like the vibes, yes. not actually yeah, the, the beach. Oh, yeah, okay. Vibes. Well, it makes sense. Yeah. I like that feeling. Yeah. Um, one question I did want to ask though. Yeah. Okay. And this might be a personal. One. Oh gosh. You know he likes to say out of time and things. You know me. But yeah, how do you? And you could feel free to refuse me if you don't want to answer. But well, how, how do old you, am I? Oh no. Well, sorry, I didn't she hear you. She said she was thirty. Oh, I was. I didn't ask her what she was. Oh, sorry, oh. I misheard you. Gone. No, I said they could feel free to. Yeah, to yeah, disagree yeah. In question. life, we can always feel free to just. Oh, say okay, no. yeah. I just don't want to make you feel like you're pressured to answer the question. But um, how do you how do you fund all your travels? Okay, so 
basically like i said my first solo trip i was 19 right so mm. that one i had got like my first like summer job i worked at the wimbledon tennis tournament as like a steward and so i made like a thousand pounds over the summer and at the time i had like a student loan because i was a student at university so i didn't really need the thousand pounds for like rent or anything like that because the mm. student loan was covering those things so i was like okay i have a thousand pounds to do what i want with so that's how i bought my first flight to jamaica back when i was 19 and i just went for a few weeks and i a slept few on weeks two weeks oh. um uh -huh. and i slept on a, lo a local person's couch because i realized after i had bought the plane ticket that i didn't really have much money left for anything else so i was like well hold on a minute so how are you gonna surfing? Yeah, couch surfing. What? Yeah, that's, how I discovered, that's how I yeah. discovered couch yeah. surfing. It's back when I, was, I googled like how to stay with a local person in Jamaica, and then it came up with like a few blog posts, and I discovered this website called Couch Surfing, which is where there are hosts like all over the world who love meeting mm -hmm. foreigners and stuff like that. So they host like travelers or backpackers on their couch for free. But it's like a cultural exchange. You're expected to maybe bring them a little gift from your country, like maybe teach them a recipe from your country, whatever it is. They want to mm -hmm. hang out with foreign people maybe because they want to build connections around the world, maybe because they're proud of their community, they want to show it off or whatever it is. So I couch surfed in Jamaica for two weeks back when I was 19. And so from then I realized like, you don't actually need that much money to travel because there are people that are happy to like host you. And there's other things that you can do. I then discovered Workaway, which is a website where you can like volunteer on a farm in exchange for accommodation and food. So it's like, you're volunteering your time. It doesn't have to be a farm, but often it's you fun. have options um yeah. it can be a hostel where you just work in you know like a backpacker hostel where you work in the reception they give you a bed in a dorm like i've done lots of different workaways now so after i discovered these websites i realized mostly i just needed money for a flight plus like Food some phone credit or a bill. Yeah. like whatever like you need a bit more money but like not huge amounts of money mm. and so then i would just always do jobs like after university where <laughs> I would maybe get like extra unpaid leave, like maybe jobs where they were kind of flexible, they had enough staff, they wouldn't mind if I would like take some some more unpaid leave. Or I would work in schools where you get like the school holidays obviously off, which is like oh, that makes sense. Good, yeah. like intervals throughout the year to travel. So I would just like do my jobs around get traveling. Do you know what I mean? So mostly I would just go away for like short periods. Um but then <laughs> basically like almost two years ago now so soon after covid um i worked like a few different jobs during covid i um, picked up some shifts at like the covid test centers which paid kind of decent because some people were scared to do it and you could have like long days like 12 hour shifts and i was also working in care um like taking care of something <coughs> um so i got like lots of shifts during covid for that as well so i basically saved a lot during covid um and so i was able to like quit my jobs and use that money to buy a one-way flight to the caribbean and then that's when I started TikTok. So then obviously my TikTok grew, which gave and me well, generated some one way flights to the Caribbean, as we said. Yeah, I just got a ticket to Jamaica, like oh. when I quit my jobs. So they, you didn't have to show like a wrong trip. Like oh, if you can't yeah, rush I know, I got, elsewhere. I know, I, know oh. I got one, but like it was like a changeable one, whatever. Like I say uh, one way flight because I, it was a return, I'm but like I didn't. Fast. What is the I'm my training fast for that, so. Yeah, I guess. But you know, I, 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 it, 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 like, it was a return, but yeah. I wasn't going to use the return leg that way. Um and at the time, because COVID had happened, you could change your dates of the flights quite easily because the airlines, <laughs> they made these like flexible rules. Yeah, because COVID, of COVID was the best time so to travel, yes. It was what, like, get stuck quite a good elsewhere. time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and so then I started the TikTok and then obviously that just brought me like way more connections because people might be like, oh, I want you to come and like stay at this guest house so you can post a video. So I'll be like, well, okay. And so then I'd have like a few more places to stay and then maybe I'd like make more friends in that country because of TikTok and then maybe they'd know like a hostel that wants someone to do the work or anything, whatever. Like obviously the more connections you You'd have, get more it's options. easier to travel, right? So like since TikTok has just been easier to travel than it was before for me. So um, anyway, but the point is, sorry, I didn't answer the question. So yeah, some savings from those jobs that I've obviously been doing since I was 20. Um, and I also teach English online to like people who English is not their first language. Uh. So um because and being i have like a british helps. accent some people want to perfect their british accent and like <laughs> um i once did a little course in teaching english as a foreign language so i've got that like certificate thing so <laughs> some people pay me to like practice english conversation with them so i just do it on my phone there are people that want to have a british accent for sure yeah. because they've got an yeah. exam in it like the queen's english no but this is so impressive that like you <laughs> I don't want to say taking risks, but like you know what you want to do, sorry, I'm which so is sorry. travel, <clears throat> and like you just build, just earning money around it rather than people you know just at a career never leave Trinidad or their country. And yeah, but obviously what you have to remember is that like <clears throat> in a sense, yeah, but in a sense like you work stacking shelves in a supermarket in the UK and you're making <clears throat> like nine pounds an hour. The minimum wage in Trinidad is like what three pounds an hour. 
Good Lord. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, in a way you can say, oh, some people are just not ambitious, they're stuck in a career, but in a way, like there's obviously privilege yeah. involved as well in terms of simply where you're born. Like if you live with your mom and you, don't, and you can walk to work, let's say, and so let's say you don't have to pay rent because you live with your mom. Let's say you can walk to work so you have no transport expenses and our groceries are pretty cheap too. And you just go and stack shelves for like three months and you really save, you don't party, you don't buy designer clothes, whatever. You really save that money and you have no like really other expenses, no kids, whatever. That's enough to like, just flights are fairly out. cheap from the UK. Do you know what I mean? We have good flight connections. That's enough if you're like good at traveling cheap. That's enough for you to go traveling for like a few months or do you know what I mean? Like, especially yeah. if you go do one of these workaways, it's enough for you to travel for, yeah, for months. Like, so I think there's, yeah, just privilege in where you're born and and if you have parents that you can stay with and do you know what I mean? In loads yeah, of things. Yeah, so there's an mean, element of like knowing what you Everyone has want a different and, starting point. Yeah. And so I think it's just important to like acknowledge both elements. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So with, what would you say is the... I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask because people would want to know. Was the, was the craziest experience you had in our country? <laughs> if you would like, like bad to crazy. share. Yeah, like bad, crazy. Not necessarily bad, just crazy. Um, so probably the bad one was probably in St. Vincent last year, which St. Vincent was great, by the way. Like, I don't want to, like, emphasize the fact that it was in St. Vincent. But yeah, in St. Vincent last year, um, when someone broke into my apartment, like, while I was sleeping... Um, <laughs> Sorry, let me just start that again because I got distracted. Please. Yeah. Um, so yeah, last year in St. Vincent, somebody broke into my apartment like when I was sleeping. So I was woken up by them like trying to get into my bedroom. And it was just like so crazy because, you know, you're sleeping. Like when you're sleeping, it's your most like... Yeah, vulnerable like, state. Right? Like, and usually you're woken up by... Sorry. Um, no, you can't, and usually you're woken up by like an alarm or like a dog or like birds. I've just never yeah. been woken up before by these like insane bangs on my bedroom door at like two in the morning so they were banging on it oh, do you want the whole story yes okay yeah. right so in st vincent i was there for a month i rented like an apartment that's usually a long-term rental but they had it empty so i managed through connections to get it as like a one month rental because it was cheaper than an airbnb so it was like in a normal kind of area i don't know what area to equate it to for trinidad but it wasn't like the lavantil but it also wasn't like the west moorings it was like maybe well, that's a large like let's say somewhere yeah. like somewhere kind of regular but like working class but like yeah, not the okay. literal hood of you could get you know robbed I mean? if you get if you were reckless that's what i mean like you could like let's just not focus on well yeah, anyways. it wasn't like it wasn't like it wasn't, insane. Bad. It wasn't, it was like, it wasn't a great area but it wasn't insanely bad and i had been there for a whole month at this point my flight was like two days after this happened and i felt quite comfortable there quite normal whatever um <coughs> and so yeah it was quite residential just different houses the houses look the same as they do here you know when people have like an apartment downstairs that they rent out so that's the situation it was like i was in the downstairs apartment there was a lady living upstairs and she had two like studio apartments as well as mine in her kind of like backyard so there was like an me plus two other single girls and then a single woman living upstairs so four single women living in this like i don't know what's called i mm. sure them people kind of... are wrong they know that uh-huh cool um so this definitely dropped. <laughs> um, do you think it matters? No, go ahead. Um, okay. Oh, the weight fell off. Is this is such an old noise we get and we hear it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not oh, we safe. Thing. Lovely. Uh -huh. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then, like I said, stayed there for a month. Everything was fine. Then on my second to last night, um, I went to sleep and my bedroom, it had... So when you come in, it's like the kitchen living room and then you go ahead to my bedroom which has another door and so my bedroom had like a twisty lock thing which i would just lock every night because like why not like just in case type thing and then obviously the front door had like a lock and so i gone to bed like 10 p.m whatever in my opinion i had locked the front door obviously who knows but in my opinion i had locked the front door anyway um then yeah i went to sleep obviously lights were off whatever, whatever. and most of my belongings were in the bedroom so then, yeah, I just, like, heard this, like, insanely loud, like, let's say, like, five bangs. But not from someone's hand, more from, like, maybe something metal or, like, something really, like, hard. These, like, really, like, hard bangs on my bedroom door. But, like, I was fast asleep. So I kind of, like, woke up. But by the time I really woke up, it, it had stopped because it, like, takes you a while. Like, oh, what's going on? And then I was, like, you know, like, what just happened? Because I'm, like, half asleep. And then I was trying to tell myself, oh, you were just dreaming. Like, you know, I was trying to tell myself, like, no, like, mm -hmm. just go back to sleep. Like, <laughs> um, I was like, oh, it was just the wind, like, making your bathroom <clears throat> door bang on itself. Like, no. Um, but then I heard, like, more noises inside my house. So I was like, 
okay, like it's real. So I was like, okay, let's, what's the time? So I look at my phone, it's like 2 a.m. I'm like, great, like no one's gonna be awake type thing. I don't know what's going on. Then by the time I've really like started to think like, what should I do? I then hear some screaming now from like across the garden. So probably one of these girls has got these like studio apartments in the garden. And I can't hear any noise in my apartment anymore. So I think, okay, this person couldn't get to my room. So they've gone to like get another girl, like whatever it is, whatever it is that they want from them. And so there's this like horrific screaming, right? Like when I tell you this horrific screaming, like somebody help me, like call the police, like this horrific so screaming. And obviously I think that, you know, a woman is being attacked in whatever type of way. Like I literally think that I'm, you know, not visibly, but like basically witnessing like a woman being attacked, like, you know, 10 meters away or however far across the garden. And there's nothing I can like really do. And obviously I think, well, they're going to come back for me after, or maybe there's more than one of them or I don't know. Maybe someone's going on some crazy rampage through the village. I don't know. <laughs> through the village. And so, <laughs> yeah. and uh-huh. so um, anyways, then I now start texting every all the contacts I have because obviously I've made some friends like in my WhatsApp. But it's like, oh, I'm trying to like figure out who to text. I'm like, are you awake? It's an emergency. Everyone's asleep, basically. Nobody replies. And then eventually like somebody replies um, who doesn't live in that neighborhood. He lives elsewhere. And I was like, you know, somebody's... I told him what's happening. I was like, can you come? And he was like, no. And I was like can you please come? And he was like, no, I'm going to call the police. And I was like, okay, but can you come as well? Because sorry, in my opinion, like most of the men that I really respect would come in that situation. Mm. Um, And it's just happened. It just so happens that I'm not saying I don't respect him, but as in like the men that I really, really, really rate would come in that situation. My ex-boyfriend would come in that situation. So anyway, he was like, no, I'm going to do the right thing and call the police. Okay. So then he already knew where I live. So he obviously told the police where I live, whatever. But then by this time now, I'm hearing noises in my apartment again, let's say 15 minutes later, however long. Like, and so now I'm hearing like metal again, like inside my apartment, something else on my door. So I'm like, really, I don't know what's going to happen. Like this person's probably going to get into my room, like whatever's going to happen. I just have to accept, I just have to accept it because I can't leave. Like I can't get out. Like there's burglar bars on my window. Like if I leave, where am I going? Like, so I was just literally thinking like, I don't know what's going to happen when they come in, but like, pfft. I'm going to throw my phone at them, ask them if they want it and mm. <laughs> accept whatever my fate is. But like, I don't know, like really what my fate is. That's scary. So, and then <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. So <laughs> then eventually like, yeah, he says, oh, the police are on, on their way, whatever, whatever. And at one point I actually like hid under the bed, which makes me laugh so much. Cause like, what are you hiding? Like, what, how's that gonna help? Do you know what nah, I mean? But, well, I mean yeah. anyway, um, time, no, no, so eventually now someone says, Oh, it's the police, you know, whatever. And by this time the noises had also stopped <laughs> in the apartment, so I guess the people are gone or whatever. But I don't know, maybe they're just like hiding or something. So, anyways, these men, it's like four of them, they're like, Oh, it's the police. So I look out of the window, like outside my bedroom. They're not even in uniform, like okay, they have a little polo or something, but they're not really in like really, really uniform. They just have like a flashlight. So I'm like, well, I hope they're the police. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, oh, come out. And I'm like, well, there might be someone in my apartment. I don't particularly want to. Yeah. And they're like, oh, sorry, you have to. I'm like, okay, great. Thanks for the support type thing. So then I, obviously I have to unbolt my bedroom and kind of like run out through the front yeah. door. But then as I was trying to unbolt the bedroom, it was like a bit stuck because obviously they'd been trying to yeah. like tamper with the lock or whatever. So but it, it did open in the end and I went out and there was nobody there. Police did literally nothing. I mean, I, I'm not like a fan of the police anyway so it didn't change my opinion it actually just confirmed you my found opinion out even what more. happened to the other girl um yes so what happened to the other girl is that oh we pieced together everything so basically what happened was he came into my apartment wanted to get into my bedroom so obviously that's how i woke up is that he was trying to come in my room couldn't get in so he went to her apartment to try and i guess get the second best option type thing she was already she was still awake sorry because it was like 2am she was still awake but her phone was like dead or it was in the other room she didn't have her phone right So then she sees him like trying to come in, kind of like mess with the window, like playing with the blinds, like, you know, messing with the window basically. So she like shouts at him, like go away, whatever, whatever. She literally saw him. She said he was wearing like a white hoodie with his hood up. But he just didn't. A white hoodie. He, yeah, it's I know everyone says that. It's crazy, right? Does, does nobody but, cares anymore? That's like but Robin he just, and like, didn't. He was like not deterred by her literally sh- saying like, go away. Like I can see you type thing. So he yeah. carried on messing with the window. And that's why she screamed was just to try and make him go away. So thankfully, like she wasn't actually screaming because of any. Oh, thank God. It was God, just. Tr- was just so obviously yeah. in the end, he went away from her, came back into mine. And I forgot to say the TV from the living room was gone. So when I heard the metal the second time, it was the metal obviously of getting down the TV because that's all he could get because he couldn't get to my room he couldn't get People to her room people still stealing TVs boy because he couldn't get there are a big thing in your hand <laughs> well yeah because yeah, yeah exactly like that's the last resort do you know what I mean so 
that was probably the worst thing just because the time period of from the bangs until when I came outside when like the police were there or whatever was like a 45 minute period of like not knowing like yeah. my fate type thing so that's why it was like bad like I think if it had been like quick then like who really cares do you know what I mean because it's yeah, finished, it was just like, horrendous and just, just me... like the screaming yeah was, like, you the hear worst somebody part. screaming you just don't know yeah, what's going like, on I was picturing like and obviously because it's a woman screaming yeah. as well it just feels you like just worse. assume Gilgan you know yeah exactly so that was probably yeah like the worst thing um how it happens in Vincent yeah but I would 100% I actually want to go back to St. Vincent yeah. this year like that could happen anywhere yes literally it yeah. does happen everywhere which so, country you said they didn't want to go back to there's none in particular. Like, Amsterdam's a bit boring for me. As well as like Paris, Paris wasn't Central. great. I hear, I hear Paris real work. It's not what you think. It's dirty, yeah. you know, just a lot of people, yeah. French rude. I don't know how true that is. I'm yeah, I mean, for me, like, I didn't find that the people were very friendly, but maybe I just met just, the wrong ones. I know, and apparently like, French culture, <laughs> just like that. Yeah, I don't know, and okay the eiffel tower like uh, i don't know i just wasn't like i was more asking from a caribbean standpoint oh like, really not cool. um i don't <laughs> know nah, I specify do you count suriname as the car i know caricom headquarters there but do you let count... me tell you about suriname oh, ah! i don't matter fuck i won't <laughs> so personally i just found Still? suriname maybe a bit less exciting than the other caribbean places i've been so if I had to choose one to not go back, either Suriname or Barbados, because I've just been there too many times and it doesn't really have like waterfalls and stuff. And I love waterfalls. Yeah, it's flat when they fly over Barbados. So, like there's no long, no wonder why this get like up from Hurricane and literally I'm like no it's just flat land. But regardless, like there's still beautiful things yeah, about yeah. everywhere. So I would never say never, but it's like if I had to answer the question, do you know what I mean? Fair enough. Um, yeah. I just seen them and I just curious, you got your tattoos on any Caribbean or just um yeah so i got one like a little palm tree on my stomach hmm. um like in panama when i was about 20 um and then i was too scared to get any more but then last year in guyana my tiktok like was quite successful there and people kept asking to tattoo me so in the end i was like okay so then last year i got this one and then it just all went from there so yeah i got this banana tree once the other day <laughs> in, um, the, the, the person who did that banana did it real good <laughs> yeah to be honest yeah but so, now it's like really itchy because it's like healing yeah how so a majority of tattoos are caribbean themed or all of them i can't really see all of them that's like on a bull just um the majority yeah like this one is more about like feminism so it says fight like a girl <laughs> because i get really fed up of like people thinking that because i'm a woman i'm incapable of like doing what i'm Knocking clearly doing out. um yeah. and you know people just I find like throughout the world, like people think like women are so weak and so pathetic and so unable of doing things like by ourselves and stuff. So yeah, I got this one because I think women are very strong. You could fight me? Probably. Oh, he said it. Thank you. <laughs> That's not Wait. what it literally means. I know, it I means know, that I like know. every day know, we're I, fighting. I was trying, you should have seen me just now. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> don't say it. Don't no, say it. No, but you think like, okay, I understand that some countries like a lot of women are seen as like, lesser they don't have certain opportunities they're very oppressed but like you think so f this is your first time to turn out yeah seven Seventh. okay well you're here you should know everything so but like you think that women here kind of fall into that category of being considered incapable a hundred percent really really oh a hundred percent i feel like uh, a lot of Trinidadians of women are like bosses see you running their own shit yep. and things so it's like a lot of like when people talk about like the glass ceiling and opportunities yeah. sometimes well as a woman and a, with a career and everything i personally don't see it a lot of the women in trinidad are heads they, um they, what do you call it the matriarch they, they they run the households and stuff so yeah that, but you don't find that the way that men speak to you is as if you're literally incapable of even carrying a shopping bag well uh no like, <laughs> well, well I, mean, <laughs> I don't think that's a lot of men's intention i don't think the intention yeah, I mean, is to be i i think men um approach you like that because they just want to talk to you like let me carry yeah that's exactly what it oh. is oh. Yeah, they so literally like... tell me like every day not just here this is mm -hmm. not a specifically trinidadian thing this mm -hmm. is basically everywhere but like here included mm -hmm. like almost every day like they'll just tell me like oh but but you need a man to come with you around the world you can't oh but... no enjoy your own company I just yeah but like but i just don't see them saying that to men do you get it so like if if there's a man traveling by themselves like yeah. you wouldn't well, hear them being like, oh but oh but you need someone to go to safety you. concern no, now because like, like you, <laughs> you just never know <laughs> yeah you just never know men 
you know, fall victim to a lot of things that happen when you travel to different countries too. But like, it's more likely to happen to a woman because they see them more as like a victim not and true, being eh? taken advantage of. I think so. Watching I think travel so. videos, I realize real men are just get scam, especially in Asia. And yeah, because men do it, they don't think it will happen to them. Also, I just think <laughs> you see like, that woman who trying to carry in tea house, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll take you to the massage shop. Yeah, but also like no, the a tea a inside ending. them tea houses all kind of five hundred US for a cup of tea. Well, not just that. Eh? Like when you see what I don't like, you see around carnival period and just growing up. Um, you know they consider the Caribbean as the brothel to the West or whatever. Like foreigners just come down here and just have a good time, whatever. Yeah. Rent a ass in Tobago, like all these different concepts. And rent so like when, ass. Yeah, yeah with a lot of men in Tobago get rented by a foreign woman. But that's like the same. Rent a dread in Jamaica. It's the same yeah. Thing. Oh yeah, I'm flying for that. <laughs> you have to be a Tobago and you're a Rasta. Like them strong proper. A fashion dread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. them hot boys. And Get Camilla. Uh, yeah, he'll go as Rasta. Yeah, we'll nah, some of them Tobago. Rasta man. But what was the nice. question? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I forget. Yes. Um, like I personally experience where when the foreigners come to Trinidad or they see a nice girl or whatever and they think they could just like, you know, you basically here to just serve them. They come to your country <laughs> and like you could, they could just buy your affection and time. I could have robbed a real man out here. If like, if you know, if I was like, if, I just felt like I could have just take advantage of them, but I just don't want to be involved in anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, just entertaining a foreigner. Yeah, I, I, so but I think like I feel that like I could have robbed them and do them some shit now because they think they like. Oh yeah, money. I come here with my US and my pongs and things. But nah. then like, the, I think that line is a bit blurred because like for you it might be okay because you don't need that, but yeah. there are women unfortunately in countries where the minimum wage is like two pounds an hour who in order to feed their child actually maybe might need that sometimes yeah, and right. that's when in like the D dominican republic for example you get girls as young as 13 sleeping with 60 year old german men for a 10 pound note and getting impregnated and left with a mixed race child that they don't even know who the dad is like <laughs> so that's like that same thing that you're talking about like yeah. it's not always funny do you know what i mean like it's mm -hmm. like like you say you could take advantage of them but like often the coins flipped and the power imbalance like yeah. money does cause a power imbalance like and you know like there is poverty like in everywhere but like especially in countries where the minimum wage is like two pounds an hour like a lot of people like do you know what i mean like a lot of people catch themselves during carnival and because it's <clears throat> either rob people as in like like with the job i have right when the regional manager came to trinidad and when he tell me the price he pay a taxi just to take him to the bricks i was like people they just see foreigners and just overdo it mm -hmm. so some people just really take advantage of them in that way just because the conversion they would be like oh it's just 10 pounds yeah, to do this but, but it's literally three dollars in trinidad yeah to do but certain you know things. what it's our choice to say yes or no to that tax yeah because you don't know better like, this is the, yeah but yeah but reparations i don't know like wait 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 yeah. If, if we are earning nine pounds an hour for stacking shelves in Sainsbury's, which is a common supermarket mm -hmm. in England, and you guys are earning three pounds an hour for stacking shelves in Massey, and we have to pay three times for the taxi that you do, well, okay. Do you know what I mean? If we say yes, we don't have to say yes to that taxi. We can have a conversation before. If it's too much, we can say, oh, no, thank you. I'll take a maxi. Or no, thank you. I'll use TT Rideshare. Or no, thank you. I'll ask the next driver. Or no, thank you. I'll sleep here for the night. Do you know what I mean? We have a choice, right? It was also our choice to come to this country knowing that we might get ripped off or whatever you want to call it like yeah. we have choice like in the matter and so i just think like when i'm in the market if they tell me that bananas are 10 10 dollars a pound but for him they're eight again okay either i pay it extra and you know what like it's reparations like, anyway <laughs> no but like it's not funny because like no my way. country is still exploiting the caribbean do you yes. know what i mean and that's yeah. not my choice i don't vote for that government i don't approve of that government but like the caribbean is still being exploited by western countries to this day so if I'm benefiting from that exploitation, which I am because it causes me to be paid nine pounds an hour for stacking shelves and you to be paid three, then let me pay a bit more for the bananas. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's the you least I can do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think anybody who's scamming thinking that far ahead, though. Yeah, like, I don't they, think they're thinking about just thinking, oh, there's opportunity to, yeah, but, to get extra yeah, but, money. But why, but why does that, why, where does that stereotype come from? Well, it comes from the fact that... Yeah, you don't know better. That, that, no, but, but, but that it's kind of true that if somebody, like, has the privilege to, to come here to have a passport, to come here, to fly here, to have the money for accommodation and, and, and fun and whatever it is, like, 
the privilege to travel, well, yeah, they have got a bit of money to, to spend a bit more on bananas because you can't come here if you're broke. You can't travel if you're broke. So, like, I guess. at the end of the day, like... Well, you basically just well, kind of gave us what you could. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. you still have to have emergency money. Like, you you are privileged if you can travel. Traveling is like, a privilege Like, do you know how many people have, yeah. don't even have a passport? Never and leave so, the country. Never leave the country. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, so, tough. like, so... It has some people never even went to Bego. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, if, like, if they see, you know, see a foreigner and see money, well, they're a bit wrong, but they're not completely wrong. Of course wrong. they're wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they just took advantage have, of a situation you, presented yeah, but, to like, them. but you have to, <clears throat> but, but historically, like, why is it that, that more English people can travel than how many Trinidadian people can travel? Well, duh. Like, mm-hmm. it's because of imbalances that are still going on to this day. Yeah. Like, so then let's pay a bit more for the bananas. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm glad you think like that too. Because a lot know. of people are just like, of course not. I'm not going to do that. Just yeah, robbing like, people. But I mean, you, I mean. No, I, well, I still, I still believe that the wrong thing is the wrong thing. Just yeah, because, yeah, yeah. you know, you can justify it as much as you want to. If you're doing something that you know wrong, you shouldn't be doing it. That's just me. I'm not saying yeah, but what you're saying is invalid. Because it is. Yeah. It is valid. Yeah. Well, but maybe because we just... But Don't also, like, your price is it. your price. Like, if you have grown these bananas on your tree and you're bringing them to the market... Then whatever value you place on it is whatever it is you choose. Yeah, like, if, if you want to sell, want to offer me your bananas for £100, it's your bananas. It's your choice. And it's also my choice to say no and then I come guess. and see how much your bananas are. So, like... Yeah. There's not a rule that like you have, you have to charge to everyone the same in the market, or yeah. that you or that you have to charge the same as you, or that. My issue with that is that they just seen you. I'm like, oh, this white, like a lot of like this boy father is a local white as we call him. He, when he's <laughs> and we go for the eggs, we get it for a certain price. When he go for the eggs, <laughs> he get a different price. So people just associate whiteness with wealth or whatever, and just try to take advantage of that. But, but even but they if have he's a local religion. white. Then sorry if this is wrong and it's mm. not a rhetorical question, but he, he is a descendant of a, a slave owner, right? Aren't we all? <laughs> Everybody in Trinidad, really? <laughs> no, but like really, like he probably has generational wealth. No, yeah. um, I wouldn't say that because bringing yeah, it to the man. To that, but no, 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 this is when, a discussion I want to have. No, uh, the other day I you know I have these youths uh, in the office and thing, and some some nonsense they say, and I was like, oh no, no, I came from slavery, and like they were so offended. No, she said something about her last name, and I was like, oh, you get that from your slavery master, like your, uncle, yeah. your grandfather who touched yeah. somebody. That's yeah. like, where, yeah. this is the truth. This is where we yeah. all came mm-hmm. along from, you know. I'm like, of course, we most of us mix. Of course, we have certain last names. Is because. Our family was owned by slave owners. That's why I have a family crest because they were slave owners. <laughs> God damn. I don't, I don't mean to laugh because we could talk about it now. We yeah, never yeah, really yeah. were victims of slavery and yeah, stuff. But like Joseph, my last name Joseph. That was from yeah. the big ass plantation, <laughs> Williams, Joseph, <laughs> all them different things. My grandmother. Sit, Louis boy. Yeah. Where you come from? Oh no! No, <laughs> yo, let's not go there. go there. No, but my grandmother, my father's yeah. mother, right? Mm. Her mother came from the Fatal Razak, right? Mm. And we have that last name Featherstone because my great grandfather was a Scottish slave owner, and he had the plantation. Yeah, he touched some Indian, and that's how my granny was half Scottish and half Indian, and that's how we started, you know. Yo, so we this story getting deep. All right, let me not get into this. <laughs> nah, yeah, all yeah, all yeah. they have, okay. have some deep no, roots, but I'm pretty sure my, fa- my, my ancestors were just field slaves. That, that's it. Well, yeah, all my have grandmother was great grandmother. Was a sl- was a slave that probably gets. Yeah, we can't pose this. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. No, we can't. How we you mean we're talking I illegitimate we things? So like, you know something I always want to like. So when. Mm-hmm. Like I talk about this in, I guess maybe with like my sister or in very like safe spaces or whatever. Like we sometimes think because me and my sister we're big like activists or whatever mm-hmm. in England you'll find us like protesting blah blah blah. And so sometimes we try and we like we like wonder okay so what's going on now is let's say like Palestine right and mm-hmm. people like me and my sister we might go to a protest whatever. And so we sometimes think back to like we don't think back because we weren't there but we try and think <laughs> okay when like slavery was yeah. happening like what was it like like how many people in England were protesting against that and the thing that we'll never know is like our literal ancestors as in my literal family like yeah. chains back then i don't know what they were doing and i'll never know yeah. and obviously me and my sister would love to think that our literal 
Um, do okay, a kind of thing to this yeah, girl. Was, yeah, yeah, we definitely. Okay, <laughs> okay, no, we okay we we could cut that out. Yeah, but like when it's look at old people and you yeah. think, we are crossing oh, gosh, the whatever. Line. These people back in the day they used yeah. to do real they were sick. They evil were sick. things, yeah, and they were sick. They were sick. so like he has sympathized with if, some people. If you but go like, as far as your grandparents, racist sometimes. I wouldn't say racist, but I was sick enough. You know? Nah, but they had a lot of racist yeah. people still. I'm old people. Like sometimes I hear my mom say, "I was like, oh my god, you get so cancelled if anybody hates you." But the thing is, she don't think of it as being racist. Just from the time. You, you don't. So, Zoe, <laughs> asking a question again, we didn't get it on film, but we asked already what was the worst experience you had in our country. I want to know what's your best experience you had in right. any country you went. Yeah, so there's a million best ones. I can't pick one, so I'm just going to give you an example of the type of thing that like basically fills my heart with joy on my travels. So I was in Panama like 10 years ago, I was eating at like a street food stand and there was this mom and her like 10 year old daughter sitting near me and they were from Panama. So they were speaking Spanish and the little girl started talking to me for whatever reason, how kids do. And so we started talking, the mom started talking to me and then, you know, we're just having general chat. They're like, oh, where are you from? Why are you here? Whatever, whatever. So it turns out they had flown from Panama City, which is like a couple of hours flight away from where I was. And they were like, oh, have you ever been to Panama City? I was like, oh, no, not really. I haven't spent much time there. They're like, oh, well, like, let us know. Like, if you want to come, you can always, you know, pass by our house type thing. Like, let's swap numbers. So we did. But the whole conversation was maybe, what, like 20 minutes maximum that we were there just eating our falafel wraps. And then I decided to just text them, like, the next day or something, being like, hey, it was really nice to meet you. Like, I would actually love to come and visit. Like, I'd be wanting to go to Panama City if that's okay. And then the mom was like, yeah, sure. Like, this is the website for the coach, like the bus um, tickets. We can pick you up from the bus station, blah, blah, blah. Bear in mind, they'd literally just met me at this food stand for like 20 minutes. And so then literally I booked it for like the next weekend. The mom came to pick me up from the bus station. And then I shared the bed with the little girl because there was no, there wasn't any, like that, there was no more space. Um, and like the mom cooked me vegetarian food. They, I had a skateboard at the time and the little girl had a skateboard. She took us to like this little kid's skate park and I was like skating with the little girl. Um, she took me to the countryside to meet like her grandma who had all these like chickens in the yard and showed me like her farm. And you know, they just like literally took care of me like I was their family for like a whole weekend, dropped me back to the bus station. And actually a couple of years ago, they finally came to England and I hosted them Aww. at my apartment. And now the girl, she's like 18 and there's, there was a baby at the time who's now like seven or something. So they all stayed um, for Christmas at uh, my house like a couple of years ago and i was just like how amazing is that that like yeah, from sitting someone. at a food stand for like 20 minutes i got to see panama city and they got to stay in london for like a whole week or whatever um so it's just like connections like that really where like you trust someone just from like the vibe do you yeah. know what i mean because i could have been anyone that yeah, they were so let, sleep, yeah. let you sleep with her child yeah. <laughs> and you you met 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but i don't know i just be really believe in like vibes so like yeah. i just believe that like sometimes you just know yeah and I like it when that happens. So. Uh, I've also been coming into that a lot too. In terms of just believing in vibes. I've been very yeah. pragmatic my world. Well, you all know me. I just believe in vibes. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I you know, I'm yeah. funny too. Huh? Like sometimes, because I've always been very reserved and like I still have my friends from however long and I've met some people throughout my 20s and like it just didn't go well mm -hmm. and people have like ulterior motives and just have their own agenda. Like, Sometimes when females want to be my friend and stuff, like now I'm skeptical because I had a couple that legit wanted to like try a thing now yeah. and like they, they disguise it as like, oh, let's be friend or whatever. And then as soon as they get the opportunity, they try her. I was like, you see this? So no new friends. Have, people so have, only thing. watch you as a sex object, dog. It's a funny thing, right? <laughs> oh. Like I was watching Zoe videos for a while, mm -hmm. right? Before she was in Trinidad and thing. And when she came back, I messaged her and I was like, you can stay by me wherever, right? <laughs> and you know, I said on my Instagram, but you know my Instagram. Yeah, like, problematic. My Instagram does look like porn. Yeah. So she was like, I was like, can I just ask you one thing? <laughs> yeah, you're bringing yeah. this kid to an yeah. exploiter. <laughs> and then he sent me a voice and he was like, no, it's not like that. Yeah. This is what I do. And he just told me everything. I was like, okay, I'll meet you in San Fernando. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, wow. Funny enough. Wow, not me as a girl. That guy who's doing all the, um, the, Trini, he's meets all the Trini people in New York, the kind of Colombian guy. Yeah, oh gosh, yeah. he messaged me and he was like, I'm going to be in Trinidad for XYZ. I think Carnival and stuff. You all meet up? He's not in Trinidad as yet. Oh, okay. He's not in Trinidad yeah. as yet. But I don't know if he, because you want to stay by multiple people. Mm -hmm. So I told him I'm in South or whatever and you could come along or whatever. So we could do some fun stuff. Yeah, we, we could some... do some fun stuff. I would love to take you off-roading though. Like as you in could... on what type of, what does that mean? 
in oh, a car sorry. or a bike. Sorry, oh, well, well, I we, a four by four truck going into the forest. like we have our little rigs, you know, oh. off road vehicles and stuff, and like we always go and explore the country and stuff. It's like that'll be cool, right? So yeah, we'll that's a good, that's a good something for your TikTok. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about that. I had another question to ask you. Oh, what's your plan for Trinidad while you're here? Because you'll be here for like a month, right? I literally have no... I literally just have to take each day Well, we're going out in South. We, that, the, I don't that, even that like parties that much. You want to take girl, the girls to party? Let me go to the beach. Let me go offering it. Let me, let yeah, me go I, I way stuff. prefer like daytime activities. We're going activities. out, we're going out in South though. We're going out. And we're going pan semis for sure. You like steel pan? Yeah. Yeah. Like no, but I don't know. Basically, it's how like, everybody else is appreciate our culture more than us. No, I no. So. Listen, I because like, we hear now all noise all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like mean? steel pan, but I I like the vibes. Like when my no, mom and it, like, it depends on. Like I like to hear one person play a pan, as opposed to like, like a, a whole... double tenor or a single tenor. Nah, I oh, like I like them. to hear small bands. You see the real big bands. That's just song like rocket. No, it, 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 if you're going to pan yard, <laughs> it's enjoyable but when you see like you go panorama and every day all of them playing at the same time i went panorama once and i was like nah i, I don't like that again. the only time but i enjoy the greens i go into wine i go in the only time i enjoy